right, we're going to look at some numbers this morning in measures, including 432, and we're going to look also at the work of Robert Edward Grant. Okay, so the ancients left encoded revelations by measurements, okay, and numbers, as we'll see, especially numbers. Take the number 432, okay, so Robert Grant calls that the Toth constant. Well, we've shown before, and let's take the base of the three pyramids at Giza. So 432 times 8 feet for Menkari, 432 divided by 2 for Khafre, and 432 for the Great Pyramid. Now, of course, those are in feet and in meters and in, uh, and in cubits, okay? So, but, so it's not the measurement that's critical for putting the meaning through. It's the number, 432, because you got feet, meters, and cubits, but it's the 432. So, and let's be reminded a little bit about what's special about 432. In 12 hours, there are 432, 100 seconds. In the sun's radius, it's 432, 1,000 miles. Mayan Bakhtin's, it's 432, 1,000 days. The golden angle times pi equals 432. Amazing. The diameter of the moon, 432 times 5 miles. Okay, and then the speed of light is 432 squared miles per second. Wow. And then e over 2 pi equals 0 0.432. So some of the many ways in which 432 is amazing. Okay, so a second example for how number is revealed through measures of various sorts is 7920. Okay, so I've shown before my discovery of the holy shaft and the holy circle that it creates of 888 feet, which is 504 ancient cubits, okay? And so that leads to a circumference of 3168, all right? The Great Pyramid has a perimeter of 3168 Egyptian inches. And then if we look at the uh, Sarsen Circle at Stonehenge, uh, that circumference is 316.8 feet, 3168. And then if we take the square of the Blue Stone Circle, the square that's tangent to that circle, the perimeter is 3168, okay? And so if we take the square that squares my holy circle on the plain of Giza there, the perimeter is 3168. Okay, so you got this amazing correlation of the 3168. But what, let's look at the side length of each one of the squares that we just pointed out there. So for Stonehenge, it's 7920. For the Great Pyramid, it's 7920. And for the holy circle, it's 7920. And of course, the reason we're going for that number because it's the diameter of the earth in miles. So again, we've used these different measurements here. We used feet for Stonehenge, inches for the Great Pyramid, cubits for the holy circle, and miles for the earth. So it wasn't the different measures, it was the number 7920 that came through as the revelation there, okay. So 732 and 7920, we've shown that they're revealing these numbers through various measurements. Okay, so the 175, excuse me, the 1.75 foot cubit in the Great Pyramid, that's what Robert Grant calls the long cubit. Okay, so if we take a baseline of 440 royal cubits, we know that's the base of the Great Pyramid, but that is also 432 long cubits, long cubits being the 1.75 foot cubit. Okay, so that's our baseline, whichever measure you use, 440 or 432. And then of course, if you put the 51.84 degree slope angle there, you've got the Great Pyramid. And this triangle represents the Great Pyramid. The perimeter just happens to be 360 times pi, okay? So if you take the height of that, which is 280 royal cubits or 275 long cubits, and use that for the diameter of a circle, it's so interesting that the area of that blue circle equals the area of the golden triangle, which is 59,404 long cubits squared, all right? Which is 432 times 137.5. Wow, okay, because that's the golden ratio, the golden angle. The circumference of that blue circle is 864, which is 432 times two. Again, these are in the 1.75 foot cubit what Robert Grant calls the long cubit, okay? Now, if we take half of the height of that Great Pyramid of long cubits, it's 137.5, incredible, okay? Because that's the golden angle. 
137.5 degrees leaves in a 360 degree circle an angle of 222.5. And so if you divide those two, you get 1.618, which is, of course, phi, the golden proportion. Incredible. Okay, so there's the center of the Great Pyramid. All right, let's uh, take that what was the diameter of a circle, and let's make it the radius of a circle, okay, this large circle here. Okay, so then if we square that circle, so we get the base of the Great Pyramid, because if you take the height of the Great Pyramid, make that a radius of a circle, that when you square that circle, you get the base of the Great Pyramid. The circumference equals the perimeter. Wow. Okay, but there's more. This is so interesting to me. So by this picture, you can see that the 440 royal cubits are taken uh, from the casing stone where the, uh, but there's this other angle down there, the platform angle, okay? You can see it in the yellow stripe there, okay? So that line along the casing, that's where you get your 440 or your 432. That's the line you're measuring. But what about if you measure this longer line here, okay? That's the, the, the platform level, sometimes called the sockle, okay? So um, there's your 432, 440 Great Pyramid right there. But what we just showed is that there's a longer line there, the sockle line, okay? It was this one right here, all right? So what is the length of that line? If you use the 1.76 foot cubit, that's the ancient cubit I talked about before, which is used in my holy circle, it's used in Scotland's Roslyn Chapel, Solomon's Temple, Chartres Cathedral in Paris, the Ark of Noah, the Ark of the Covenant, the Khufu boat, yes. That's, that is 432 ancient cubits. That longer line that's longer than the 432 long cubits, longer than 440 royal cubits, how long is it? Well, if you measure it in this ancient cubit of 1.76 feet cubits, it's 432. So you got 432 again hidden in measurements that are common ancient measurements, common but somewhat not as widely known. So to show the numbers here, the casing level, which is where we get the 432 and the 440, that's 756 feet. The socket level, sometimes called the socket, that's 760 feet. So when you divide that by 432, those two lengths we just gave, or those two lengths we've talked about for the base, you get 1.75 and 1.76. That's incredible, that, that, that connection then between the 1.75 foot cubit, that's at a ratio of 1.75 and 1.76. Wow, okay, that's just incredible. That 432 is revealed through this 1.75, what Robert Grant calls the long cubit. It's a cubit that's 1.75 feet long. And then the ancient cubit, which is 1.76 feet long, and they're related by, you know, this ratio of 175 to 176. So other indications of 176, just to show this is a data point, take a mile, 5,280 feet. Well, you know, 176 divides into that evenly. 176 times 3 is 528. Okay, what about these ratchet cuts in the ceiling of the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid? They're 1.76 inches, okay? Now, John Michel, the great metrologist, gives the royal cubit as 1.718181818 feet. And the long cubit he gives is 1.728. So those two measurements, the, the, the royal cubit and what he calls the long cubit, divide the Great Pyramid bases, the socket and the casing, by 440. So, and, and in doing that, so that's the 440 royal cubit, they're in relationship of 175 and 176. Now remember, the 1.75 foot cubit and the 1.76 foot cubit divide the Great Pyramid bases by 432. They're also in a ratio of 175 to 176. It's just a coincidence, quote unquote, of numbers that they're 1.75 feet and 1.76 feet and in the ratio of 175 to 176. Just amazing. So what I conclude from this is that all systems of measure are related. And it, it, by a ratio of like 6 to 7, 11 to 12, 99 to 100, or 175 to 176, like we just saw, which leads to the Great Pyramid revealing this Toth constant, 432. I've been reading a book by John Neal, a metrologist who I've actually been in some conversations with uh, on academia. 
And so in his book, All Done With Mirrors, he claims it was a huge discovery of the metrologists when they realized that all ancient systems of measurement were linked by ratio. I about fell out of my chair when I read this. Holy cow, this is a very hidden, hidden revelation. Now, the, uh, the metrologists include Neil himself, Algernon Berriman, I'm reading his book right now, uh, Historical Metrology, uh, John Michelle, I'm reading his book, View Over Atlantis, and Harry Severson's Measurements of the Gods, okay? So for some reason, these metrologists are like the ugly sister of science. You know, they should, it should be the queen of the, of the archaeological sciences that, you know, measurement, that's, that's more going to reveal more than pottery or even, even monuments. But it's like this forgotten science. And it's, so again, just to repeat, it was a huge discovery of the metrologists when they realized that all ancient systems of measurement were linked by integral ratios, the ones we showed there, okay? So just some examples here, the, the long Greek mile is 24 25 of the long Roman mile. You can see the math there. All Byzantine long measures are an increase to the Greek long measures via 100 versus 99. Increase all imperial measures by 24, 25, 25, 24 to get the Sumerian, Saxon, and Indian measures. And Harry Sievertson says, when you take those Sumerian, Saxon, and Indian values and reduce them by 24, 25, you get the British values, then reduce those by 24, 25, and you'll get the long Greek measures. Reduce those again, and you get the long Roman values. This is unbelievable to me. It is simply unbelievable. You would expect that if measuring systems developed separately in different civilizations, they'd be distinct. You know, Europe would have one system that would be sort of unrelated to the African system, and then the South American, the North American, and the Asian. You know, these would all be different, unrelated, you know, unique systems of measures. But all these ancient systems are found to be connected by a handful of ratios, the metrologists tell us. 6 to 7, 9 to 10, 11 to 12, 24 to 25, and our 175 to 176. This is unbelievable. The Roman, the Greek, the Byzantine, the Indian, the Sumerian, the British Imperial, the Saxon, the Chinese even, and many others. Unbelievable. So they are essentially one huge interconnected system. Now, Bouchard shows that each ancient civilization could have got its exacting measurements through the use of the pendulum, but that would only relate various systems of measurement by decimal values that wouldn't be integral fractional values, integral ratio values. So again, this can only be attributed in my mind to one huge interconnected system, yes. So that's incredible. There's only one credible explanation as far as I'm concerned for this phenomena. It's that there must be a single aboriginal source for measure. A thing that I think the cubit meter foot relationship that Alan Green and Robert Grant have brought out also shows, okay? So the Alpha and the Omega, my guide and leader, come with me to Egypt in October. There's the Alpha and Omega that I discovered in the secret part of the great Pyramid secret and that the public's not allowed there. Of course, Robert Grant's found an Alpha and Omega in the very public king's chamber. But uh, Egypt's magical. Contact me about joining me in October. Thanks for watching.